the line predictor. Um, excited to talk about it. I know there's certainly been a lot of buzz and curiosity surrounding this feature. Um, it's also been a lot of confusion, so I thought the webinar would be a great format for me to highlight what it does and kind of show people how to use it, even if you're, if you're already kind of in the beta testing or your current user or if you're even thinking about what this thing does. Um, I think it's really important for us to first take a high level 10,000 foot view of what this thing, uh, the line predictor, is uh, designed to do. And then when, at the end of this, we'll jump into actually using it. I'll show you kind of more intricate parts of it. Uh, definitely ask questions throughout this uh, webinar. You can use the chat feature. That's really the best way to get that message to me, and I will answer a bunch of questions at the end. Really, I want this to be about a little bit of learning the first 10 minutes, jumping into using it and getting a lot of questions and uh, a lot of discussion, really what you guys w are interested in, in hearing more about. Um, and last but not least, this is the last week in debate to test it, so if you are interested in checking this product out, uh, definitely email me at help at Sports Insights or Dan at Sports Insights. Uh, we'll get you set up, and as of Monday, the beta testing will close, um, and then we'll we'll move on to pushing it to a full-time production uh, product. So the line predictor. Uh, I thought it'd be first to start off with what it actually doesn't do, because um, it hasn't been a lot of again speculation about what it does do. Uh, it does not predict closing lines. Obviously, we know opening lines. Um, we the predictor will tell you which way they're heading, but it won't tell you what they're going to close at. I think that's important to understand because that's that's something totally different, and that's not what this does. Uh, steam moves, it does not predict those. We don't have inside information. We don't know Billy Walters is on a game, um, and we're going to tell you before the line actually moves. Uh, this is really not what that does. Uh, it also does not guarantee winners. Uh, people have asked us, you know, should I bet every line prediction that you make? No, not at all. It actually... It's a tool you use after you've done some solid handicapping. You say, hey, I like this team. We'll tell you if the price is going to go up or down on it, if you should act on that and save yourself a half point. That's the most powerful way to use this. Again, it does not replace sound handicapping. Um, people should come to the, to the table here with an idea of what team they want to bet and then look at the line movement to help them understand should they jump on this game now or wait? And we'll get into why that's, that's very, very important and a very powerful tool by itself. Uh, so what does it do? Well, uh, first of all, it does predict the next line move. It does it very accurately. It's going to tell you with a confidence level what, uh, which way this thing's going to, which way this game's going to go. We'll say 85% confidence level. This game, uh, Virginia will go from three and a half to three, as you've seen in our later example. Uh, so there's there's different indicators that give us different confidence levels. Stuff will be in the 90s. Stuff will be in the 80s. Stuff will be in the 70s. The lowest confidence level will give out. I believe is in the high 60, like 67 percent is is where we we cut it off. We definitely have other predictions below that, but it's an issue of quantity versus quality. And of course, we want people to be confident in what we send out, so they can feel fairly reliable somewhere in the, close to the 80, 70, 80 percent level that our confidence is, uh, will hit. Uh, we only provide predictions on games that satisfy our model. Uh, it's roughly 10 to 15 percent of the games available at any one time will have a prediction on it. We don't give one for every game because there's obviously indicators um, that you know sometimes satis are satisfied and sometimes aren't. So um, we use that. Now uh, <clears throat> it will save you, what it does do, it will save you a half point or you'll get you a half point. In this case, if, the, if you want to bet the favorite before it moves a half point against you, we will predict that and give you the opportunity to, to react on it before the game does move. And of course, if you're waiting for that extra half point, we'll tell you there's a, there's a high confidence level that this game is going to go from plus three, plus three to plus three and a half. Of course, if you wanted that plus three anyway, well, wouldn't you want the plus three and a half? And we'll explain again why that's really important. Now, the actual accuracy levels, the NBA accuracy, the last 1,000 predictions we've sent out has hit uh, at 80.9 percent. That means, you know, when we predict a line movement, there's in this case, it's an 80, 80, and historically, there's 80.9 percent chance that it it, it did hit. Uh, the NBA accuracy is uh, in the last 1,000. Uh, it's a little bit lower, 79.7, still pretty respectable. Um, we definitely notice that the pro sports are a little more predictable uh, than the college basketball, uh, but they're still both very, very positive signals. So how does it work? Uh, I think it's important um, for people to understand what we've done here to kind of understand what kind of merit you should put behind um, uh, the line predictor. You know what it is? It's a computer model. What we've done is we've uh, examined a ton of historical records, millions of them. Uh, basically, the last 10 years worth of line movements, public betting percentages, volume, who moved last, 
um, the time of day, stuff like that, to put in this model. We found very quickly there are some leading indicators um, which tell us which way the market's going um, in a certain situation. There's obviously different indicators, and when certain indicators you know, both point to it, we have more confidence of it uh, moving in that direction. Uh, obviously, each uh, each prediction does have a confidence level based on the indicator score that we get from our analysis. Uh, and it's a very, you know, we've definitely done a ton of uh, data analysis and historical uh, predictions um, just to, to kind of develop this thing and kind of create something that's very robust and pretty powerful. Uh, of course, we grade every prediction going forward, so it's not like we just rely on all this backwards data. Those th last thousand predictions I sent you or gave you in the for earlier slide, those are based on from the day we actually released this to the public to now. Um, as you see, you know, it, it's still holding up and you can see the last thousand and the last hundred so you can kind of see the last couple of days, how it's been doing, of course, the last month, which allows people to understand, oh, maybe, maybe this, maybe their model's not as good all of a sudden. And that always helps me whenever I look at uh, something of this nature to understand if its predictive value is starting to lose or if it's getting better. Um, so how do you use it? Um, really, the, the best thing to do to how to use it is, is to know it helps you to know when to bet now or to wait. I equate it to um, an airline ticket. Say you wanted to fly to Florida. You, you already want to fly to Florida. We're going to tell you that Florida ticket, historically, it's $300 right now, but historically, it will go to $330 uh, within you know, the next time it moves. So it's going to get more expensive. Okay, you buy that ticket right now. Again, it's based on the assumption that you want to go to Florida. Now, conversely, if we told you the ticket will get cheaper, you you would say, okay, well, let me wait, and I'll buy the, the ticket tomorrow when it gets $30 cheaper. And that's exactly one of the, the primary ways in how to use it, and that's probably the best way I can use to explain it to people. Uh, we're not telling you to go to Florida. <clears throat> we're telling you that if you're going to go there, guess what? This is what's going to happen to the price. Um, it also produces this half edge for what exactly I just told you. If you're going to go there, you know, save yourself the money and buy it now or wait and you save yourself the money by it, the price going down. Now there's also another feature we have called Line Watcher. To combine this with the Line Predictor is a very um, very helpful combination. What Line Watcher does, and I'll show you an order and I'll actually place it in, so in that case you're actually waiting for the price to change at your sports book. Instead of watching lines all day, you enter an order and say, okay, when the line goes from three to three and a half at my book, let me know and then I'll go bet the game. Um, it kind of does a lot of that dirty work for you, so you don't have to sit here and stare at um, line uh, line movements all day. You kind of go out and, and people can get emailed. You can get pop-up alerts by this. You can get our app. We'll sort of send you a push alert. So if you're out to dinner or watching, uh, you know, the game on TV, you can actually uh, get get down and um, do it very quickly. Uh, so here's an example. Again, I'll get into a real life one, but I thought before I jumped in there and people. You know, start looking at other places, they could see this. In this case, we're looking at this Virginia-Florida State game. So if you already liked Virginia at minus three, we have a line prediction at it right now that shows an 82% confidence level that Virginia will go to three and a half. So you would hopefully jump on that game at three and a half. And this is exactly what our prediction looks like. This is how what it reads like. And this is what you can see. You can see the line, um, let's see, you can see the line, um, chart on belief, on below the prediction, but it'll have the confidence level, kind of show you where it's been, what's uh, what tapped since then, and where it's going. Um, I think that that's probably one of the best ways to use it. Now, so now why do these half points matter? Most people would think, oh, a half point, am I really going to waste all this time on a half point? Um, half point is huge in basketball. It really does increase your winning percentage. It doesn't even matter which team you're betting, if you're always getting an extra half point, you'll do long-term winning expectancy. It goes through the roof. So 2% of all games land on the closing spread. This is based on analysis we did. You can probably find similar stuff on the Internet the last five years, just looking at closing numbers and how often that game actually landed on it. So 2% of them. Now, 5.5% of all games, NBA games, land within a half point of the total. So getting that half point in your favor, basically 1 in 20 games, all of a sudden, went in your favor. Um, and that, again, should seem like a good number. Some people don't, well, that's not that many games. It, it really is, assuming that you already have a strategy, even that, that it's kind of more at a 50-50 break even, you've got a few extra percent in your side and that your long-term expected win, win rate will just, again, dramatically go up when you're always getting that extra half point. So it does matter, and it's a very simple thing to implement if you're going to bet that team. Wait or bet it now, uh, and don't wait for the bad number. Uh, so in summary, uh, it accurately predicts line movement. That's what I said it would do, and that's exactly what it does, and that's exactly what you'll see it do. Uh, it gives you a half-point edge in, certain, in all situations. Again, you, you already need to come to the table with 
a play. It's not going to tell you which game to bet. It's going to tell you which way the market's moving. Uh, it's a tool that complements sound handicapping. It doesn't replace it. Some people uh, that first started using that were very, very um, upset about that, I guess, or are just confused about it. They said that they did. They thought they should bet every time we said there was a prediction, and, and that's not the case. Um, this is the last weekend for the line predictor. Definitely email me uh, if you want to interested in beta testing the, the product. And help at Sports Insights. We'll set you up. You can use it all weekend. Uh, and of course, thank you for attending this. Now I'm going to jump into, let's see, the actual live odds screen. And I'm not sure how many people are familiar. I'll just give you a quick rundown. This is the team column. Um, it was read from light right, sorry, left to right. So this is our spread percentages. This is which way the game's getting. Um, bet by the public and this is the line predictor column and of course anything with an arrow I'm just gonna clear this so it just makes it a little cleaner um, is something we're giving a prediction on so in this case it's Florida Florida State uh, if you hover over it you can see the 82 percent confidence that Virginia will go to three and a half if you click on that arrow you can see a much more detailed box maybe that's a uh, font wise probably easier for, for you guys to see online but again this is what we talked about in in the PowerPoint presentation that 82 percent you know confidence that Virginia will go to three and a half and we'll look at the market and again right to left and you see most of the game these are big, big books three and a half uh, sorry three at, at five dimes um, and Chris um, Pinnacle LVS um, uh, Las Vegas Hilton uh, there are some books already at three and a half but you'll see as I go across here hopefully you guys can see that the majority of them are still at three Sometimes there's always books leaning when you're tracking 50 or 60 books. There's a couple that will always shade towards favorite and shade towards the underdog. Um, that's not, you know, people sometimes get confused that, oh, well, you're predicting the obvious. Of course it's going to three and a half. I see a bunch of books at three and a half. There's probably a few books here at two and a half, too. Um, and again, we're looking at the consensus. Okay, this is the way the market's going. Uh, a few of those, you know, books may be tweaked one way or another. Um, it's not to say this, this still isn't valuable. Uh, what people would do in this case, enter this line watcher. Um, I'll show you in this case, you know, right here we're showing you Virginia will go to three and a half. So I want to bet Florida State. I don't want to get plus three. I want to get plus three and a half. So you would type in, okay, you want uh, Florida State and you want three and a half. Um, in this case, I'm not worried about the juice and I'll just press save. And then bang, when, when one of the books that I'm tracking does go to three and a half, I'll get an alert. Um, so you can put your specific book. Um, in this case, I put one in there, and it was Matchbook. Oh, to, who, oh, Grande is already at three and a half. I have I have an account there, so maybe that that's you know I probably should set that up a little bit better. But that's ultimately how it works. Um, and you get, a, you get an, uh, an alert to your email. Um, so look at some of these other games. Um, in this case, the Utah State again, 75%. So it's, it's a different confidence level. It's not quite as much as we saw in the last one. It's probably some more indicators, different indicators here, or not as pointing as the other. Still very strong confidence level, 75% that that uh, Utah State will go to 12 and a half. Um, we can look at this one here. 92% um, at Long Beach State will go to a, a, a half point. And if you look at the market, you know no one's at that number. There's one pickup, but everyone else seems to be minus one. Let's, see, let's look at Pepperdine, too. You can see another one, 76% confidence level. Now, I, um, I think it's also important to look at the, the more details page, which I just clicked on. So everybody saw that, this more details button. I clicked on it to go here. This will go to the results page, and you can see exactly what I was talking about before, the line prediction. Uh, last 100 results, last 1,000, and this is last 100. You can see in this case, College basketball has been trending um, positively. We have 89% of our, our <clears throat> predictions have have been positive, and this is a way for people to track that. Yeah, they do say what they're, they're going to do, and they do track it uh, as they do anything else. Anything that's pending, that's something that we've recently released, and we're waiting for that line movement to happen. And if it, the lines move, it gets graded as yes or no. Either we were right or we were wrong. Um, fortunately for us, you see a lot more yeses than nos here. Um, so. I think that's that's most of what I wanted to talk about. I definitely want to go into the, the questions period um, to get, get people an understanding of what they want to talk about. There's a question about will you provide over-unders um, predictions. Now, these are only spread-based. That's correct. We definitely plan on over-unders. It's not in the immediate cards. Uh, we're trying to make sure that this, you know, roll this out and educate people about it. Definitely, it seems to be very positive, so our plan is to put more time into it now to come up with over-unders. We also offer money line predictions for baseball uh, and hockey. 
those probably will happen in the next couple of weeks. We'll roll that out with this. Um, it, it works the same way as this. We'll give you a prediction level about how much we think this game's going to move next. So it might be a five cent move for this game. Um, we're really excited about it. Now we're just flushing it out, make sure it's it's ready for production. Um, is it? Um, let's see. How long? How long are the predictions valued of? Uh, um, valid for it depends on the move like that Virginia one that we looked at earlier that's been there for at least a couple hours typically they're they're measured in hours not minutes it's not like 30 seconds before uh, a massive move happens you get a prediction it typically will go up and then the market over the next hour half hour it really depends on the size the time of day you know there's more volatility when the lines first come out and of course and excuse me and the lines when they come closer to game time. They're just, they start jumping around a little bit more. But a lot of the stuff, you have hours to react to it. Um, and it will, will give you a good idea of what to jump on and what to stay off of. Um, so I got that. Did, uh, did Virginia open at four, someone asked? And yeah, the, I have four and a half at, um, at Chris. Um, we can check a different book. Sometimes openers, I mean, we just get the first number from Chris. I'm seeing a bunch of other four and a halves. Here's five dimes. So whoever asked that question, definitely think it's four and a half. Um, what are the best bets picks, picked on? Uh, best bets, um, our best bets, what are, what do we use to pick those? All kinds of stuff. They pretty much don't have almost zero to do with the line prediction feature. That's what I'm trying to get at. Some people uh, will think that they're the same thing. They have nothing to do with each other. What I would do with one of our best pet, bet picks, in this case, if I wanted Florida State, you know, that was our best bet pick, I would, before I bet that game, wait for it to go to three and a half, so I put myself in a better chance to win with that. Um, the best bets, though, we use all our strategies. We use the contrarian method. Uh, we use steam moves, smart money, reverse plays. We do um, some subjective handicapping. We have some <clears throat> math models in the background that we kind of run ourselves, and we aggregate a ton of data, and we do you know, proprietary stuff, which I'm not going to go into, but it's, it's basically pull from our own buckets. So those are the games that we bet as a company here, um, and that's, that's primarily where it comes from. Oh, what book do we use to know if, if which way, um, if it was graded? Uh, again, I think I made that clear, but maybe I didn't. If the book that we use as the kind of um, the standard is the consensus line, which I put right here first. What is the consensus line? That is the average line between a lot of the major books. Roughly seven or eight of them will just take what are those big books at, like the Chris's of the world, Five Dimes, Greek, Pinnacle. Where are they? And when they move, they typically move in unisons. Um, so... That's kind of the general market. If you can consider that the average number, that's what we grade ourselves again. Because again, one one book might have already moved to three and a half. Um, in this case, you know, Greek, and then another book, you know, might be at two and a half. And we really have to say, okay, we'll just take the middle number, and that's what we graded off of. I'd have to look at our prediction time and what time Greek moved to three and a half. That would be an interesting thing. Let's look at that right now to see if we we actually gave a prediction before they moved. So I'll go back to this. I think Virginia was down here. Here's the Virginia. So 11:21 a.m. today, Eastern. We moved. Uh, sorry, we offered that prediction, and let's see when when um, the Greek moved to three and a half. Um, I guess they were ahead of us. They did. That was 10:30 their time, or 10:43. So they were already at three and a half when we made our prediction. But again, most of the market was already at three. I'm sure uh, most of the day. Let's see if we have any other interesting questions. Is there a correlation with the prediction line move and the spread percentage? No, there's no correlation between those two. Um, well, I, I should not say that. That that is, is is incorrect for me to say it. That's that is one of the factors we use to help us decide. You know, one of those I don't know, ten or fifteen things that we look at betting percentages. Yes, which way the public's betting it, it does influence line movement. Again, the time of day would be another thing I'd throw in there. The volume of bets, uh, especially you'll start seeing the number of bets go up and down, or usually just always goes up, but at the rate it goes up, um, that, that's something that we will consider. So yes, there's some factor in there um, that, that, that will allow us to do this. I'm looking at some more questions. Um, what is the percentage that the line has actually moved the opposite direction th through the beta period? So 
I don't have any results on that, um, but you can tell it's pretty low. So if we're already, if I go to the results page again, this is all during the beta period, the last thousand predictions, we got 80% of them right. We got 100, I guess, or, you know, so that's roughly 20% that a little less than that that we got wrong. So that, I guess, answers your question that, that, that went in the opposite directions that we said. So 8 out of 10 go our way, 2 out of uh, 10 go... Um, the opposite way that we, we thought. And again, some of that's driven by line, I'm sorry, injury movement, stuff that we can't predict. Uh, you know, maybe there's a, you know, we, there's a, there's a, there's a element of randomness that we just don't, we, we cannot ever get 100%. Um, because again, a game might get steam, which we can't predict. Uh, a game might lose their key player, you know, there's no way to look at that and, and say that before it's, it's to predict that somebody's going to get hurt. So that, that, that's, uh, that's a good question, but at the same point, it's very hard to predict us 100%. Um, let's see. Should I bet on every line prediction? Again, I tried to answer that. No. But come come to the table with something that's interesting, uh, you know, from your model that you already like this team, be it, um, you know, Florida State or, or Virginia. This is to telling you take advantage of it now, jump on it, or wait. Can I see? Um, I'm trying to read all of them, but there are a bunch here. Are there teams that, that see a more line movement? Right. <clears throat> are there some teams that see a more line movements than others? And for the most part, no. That's or at least that's not something we looked at uh, in our model, um, and and we we didn't look at it, but it didn't see it doesn't seem to be any correlation between certain teams move more than other teams. Uh, there seem to be other factors involved that were weren't more predictive for us. But that that is a good question. Um, so that's, those are primarily some of the bigger questions I got. I mean, I appreciate everybody listening and sitting in and uh, trying to learn out more about this this product. And it's been an exciting couple of weeks since we launched it. But it, there, again, there seems to be more confusion than anything what it did. And what we're trying to do is is make this a tool that a professional or any kind of handicapper or sports better would use. That before they went and made a bet, they go and use this and say, okay, well, the market's going to be heading this this way. Let me wait to to to, to implement that. Um, and, um, and then, and then implement it accordingly. So I appreciate everyone taking the time. We're definitely going to email this out um, to anybody that attended so you can listen to it, and we post it on our website. And, of course, if you're interested in this beta testing period, definitely email us today because we're closing the period uh, on Friday, and then basically no one will be able to enter the beta testing uh, team. Uh, and then on Monday, everybody else will, be, will, uh, will end it uh, permanently. So we appreciate all your feedback, and... Um, Thanks for attending the webinar. Um, all right, goodbye.